Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS on Starfield PC. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a, a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an, an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for NVIDIA, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people <laughs> are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimizes your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically. And you just lower the software like that. And you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software. And also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's, it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, so borderless full screen, just stay at on. Make sure that you're playing native with your monitors or your resolution, 1080p, 1440p, 4K. So make sure that you're using that. I'm not a big fan of dynamic resolution. I don't like my resolution, like just changing on the fly, depending what I'm doing. So go with off with this one. After that, for the shadow quality, you have four brackets. If you compare ultra to low, you can expect 22% boost in your FPS. But the game looks very flat at low, so my recommendation is to go with medium. I saw 3% difference between low and medium. The big hit seems to be at high and ultra, so that's why I recommend to go with medium. Pretty much the same thing with indirect lighting. I still recommend to go with medium. Uh, not a huge difference between medium and low uh, for your FPS. And honestly, you're playing a solo game. It's not an FPS game. So you still want a decent visual and a good FP amount of FPS. So... I'm giving you what are the best like uh, setting that will provide you the most of your FPS. But after that, it, it really depends on your rig. So you will need to make some decision. After that, for the reflection, this one tanks a lot my FPS. So you just have three bracket. I recommend to go with low because it's not a huge deal. You're not necessarily seeing it when you're playing the game. And uh, it stabilizes a lot your FPS in, in some cities. It's pretty crazy when you go with low. And it's pretty much the same thing with particle quality. Not a huge... Uh, imp it's not important for me um, for my image quality. So I go with low. And honestly, it gives a big boost in your FPS when you have like particle reflections, stuff like that. After that, for volumetric lighting, I recommend to go with medium. The game looks very flat at low, so my recommendation is go at medium. But after that, when you go at high and ultra, again, it tanks a lot your FPS. So at medium, you can expect a nice 8 to 10% boost in your FPS, so it's pretty huge over there. Crowd density, it really depends. Honestly, a lot of people can just run it at high, but if you feel that you're lagging like crazy in the cities, Go with medium or even low. It helped me a lot on my laptop. I'm playing with, like with a 1060. And honestly, it helped a lot with when you are in a big city with a lot of NPCs. So this one definitely go with low if you have this issue. Motion blur in any game. I don't like this effect. So just remove that. It will help a lot to your clarity, your image clarity. Ambient inclusion. Four bracket over there. If you go ultra to low, you can expect 14% boost. But at low, the game looks very flat. So uh, less depth and stuff like that. So go with medium over here. Grass quality. Honestly, you can test high. I didn't see a big difference uh, in my FPS for the grass quality. Uh, maybe at ultra, I was losing 3%. But after that, it's like 1% for each bracket. So definitely, you can run high easily over there. Contact shadows, I recommend to go with medium or even low if you're playing on the low-end computer. You can expect a big amount of FPS. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You have four bracket. Again, big hit on your FPS if you go at I or ultra. 
V-Sync, I'm not using V-Sync. V-Sync is always adding a little bit more input lag, but in a game like this, you don't really care. Uh, but, you know, it's a question of preference. Uh, if you don't like screen tearing, definitely activate your V-Sync or use other technology like FreeSync or G-Sync. For the upscaling, I'm not using it because you don't have DLSS. Shame on you, Bethesda. But I will explain to you. I did a couple of tests with the FSR 2. Not a huge fan of it. It looks very blurry, honestly, but after the old guide, if you're still struggling with your FPS and you have like an old video card or something that's not very powerful, definitely test the FSR 2. It helps a little bit on my laptop. I'm getting like 8% boost when I was using it, but I'm going to say I don't like the image quality when I use that, so that's why I recommend to go with off. Variable rate shading, I recommend to disactivate that. You don't want to, 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 to your shading to be variable. You will see that uh, it will adapt depending on where you look and what you're doing. So definitely go with off with this one. I recommend to remove the grain intensity also. Um, not a, it's a question of preference. You will not have a boost in your FPS without it. But in any game, I don't like this fame grain effect. And the last one is depth of feel. In any game, again, I just remove depth of feel. I don't like this effect. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my Starfield guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.